think when I was in like seventh grade, someone told me that electrical engineering was the hardest type of engineering that you could do. And for some reason that just stuck in my mind. And it ended up combining kind of the best of all the kinds of engineering, right? I could do the computer science, I could do the mechanical engineering, and mostly I just felt like I was being given a toolkit to solve a really, really broad set of problems. Hi, I'm Liana Kiesing, and I'm majoring and getting my master's in electrical engineering. I was born in Fiji and grew up there for the first couple years of my life. My family moved to Virginia when I was four or five or so, and it was right across the river from Washington, D.C., and I really just spent my time in high school alternating between being an engineer, because I went to an engineering high school and my parents are engineers. I built my first computer program when I was seven. I built my first pathfinding robot when I was 14. And then also living right next to DC, I knew really early on that I loved policy and I loved government. And so I used to spend time, you know, ditching school and trying to go watch Supreme Court cases and trying to watch, you know, congressional proceedings. I got into fencing the way that everyone pretty much gets into fencing, which is that I watched a movie with sword fighting as a kid and thought it was super cool. And my parents said, you have to try a sport. And I said, great, I'll hit people with swords. You know, it's both this really fun sport that's incredibly intellectual. People call it like the physical game of chess because you're going back and forth and trying to predict what your opponent's gonna do and trying to fake them out and second intention. And then just having the opportunity to be on a team, that was something that was really new to me when I came to college. Really, it's an individual sport when you grow up and you're traveling by yourself. And so the opportunity to come to Stanford and be part of this community of people who really became very, very quickly like a family was, was just really special to me. I have taken cello lessons and gotten to be a big part of the music community as well as the dance community on campus. I've also been really involved in civic engagement work, so I ran Stanford votes during the 2020 election, and then I helped to found Democracy Today and have now helped run it for the past two years. I knew I really wanted to be an engineer and get this engineering training, but the problems I was interested in were much more social, right? It's issues of democracy, of government. There just weren't people who seemed to have answers and the tools to solve what I saw as these really pressing challenges of AI, of misinformation, of you know, what is quantum computing and how is that going to impact the rest of you know, our world and our global financial systems in 10 years. So for the past eight months, I've been involved in and working for the U.S. Senate Committee for Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs, working on AI policy. And that's exactly what I hope to do when I, when I graduate from here. The plan right now is to work at a nonprofit doing advocacy in the AI and national security space on issues of technology reform, ideally in a bipartisan setting. For the same reason that I love Washington, D.C., because it's a place full of people who really believe and want to change the world, that's what I absolutely love about Stanford and I think what makes it so special. At its best, Stanford is deeply grounded in real world problems and on focusing on how to get the tools to get us there. And the enthusiasm and the excitement to do that really have made my five years here incredibly special and shaped a lot of who I am.